Hey folks, Trailer here. Uh, I just thought I'd do a review of the BCL MRX Bison. Um, just a kind of initial impression, first review. I've, I've just put 70 rounds through it so far, but I'll uh, kind of tell you what kind of groupings it got, um, how the rifle performed, all that kind of stuff, and uh, what I like and what I don't like about it. Uh, just a couple of minor things I don't like about the rifle, but um, so let's dive in. Um, so let's start. Uh, with the fit and finish on the rifle, might as well. Um, it's quite good. Um, there's a couple minor uh, machining marks on the action that I could see just right here. You should be able to see it in the sun there. You should be able to see it glinting just a little bit right there. And that's it. That's all I can find. Um, everything's coated. It looks like it's anodized. Um, the chassis is flawless looking. Um, and the action just has a minor machining on the one part there. Um, the rifle's chambered in 5.56, five, um, they're coming out with 300 blackout, which would be really great, and uh, 7.62 by 39, and I'm hoping they'll come out with 6.5 Grendel as well, this rifle would be really sweet in that cartridge I imagine. But, um, so this has a 12 and a half inch barrel, um, it's nice and short, compact, um, if you're wondering, if you're not familiar with Canadian law, it's non-restricted, um, I won't get into the reasons why, you can research that on your own. But uh, uh, it's a pretty slick little rifle, comes with a Magpul MOE grip and a Magpul MOE stock. Uh, it does not come with this cheek riser, I added that myself. Um, it's a one and a half inch cheek riser, uh, airsoft brand, uh, because Magpul doesn't make anything higher than uh, three quarters of an inch, if I remember correctly. Um, but it's perfect cheek weld for me in this optic. The optic I have on here is a Burris uh, Full Field 2. Uh, two to seven power with the E1 reticle, so it's not an overly powerful scope, um, but it's perfect for a rifle like this, in my opinion. Uh, the rifle takes AR-15 magazines. It's not ambidextrous, but they're planning to make lefty versions of this, from what I understand. So your mag release is only on the right-hand side here. Um, I've got a cross mag in there. Canadian brand make really good mags. If you're wanting to support Canadian, use cross mags. BCL is Canadian. So, there's a number of other Canadian companies like Maple Ridge Armory um, and uh, McAbbey Defense making some cool uh, non-restricted kind of little poodle shooters that you can make into short barreled rifles and stuff right now. So, um, there's lots, lots in Canada to still keep supporting. Um, yeah, uh, let's get into the rifle. So, it's got the Black Creek logo on the side. It's not too obnoxious. I'm not not too bad uh, it's got it on the action you can see there and then made in Canada right on the bottom here so that's kind of cool I'm not a huge fan of big logos but I mean it's not too bad um, this comes with a trigger check trigger um, in other words it's a really good trigger really light pull crisp clean break it's very very nice um, the fact that it comes with that for the thousand dollar price tag is incredible um, if you ask me, um, for a thousand dollar rifle, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck here. Um, so you've got uh, M lock slots on the uh, kind of the top here, the side, and underneath. Um, so lots of places to mount accessories. Um, the maple or the uh, M lock slots on the sides uh, come off. Uh, I'm not sure why. Maybe it's uh, the M lock slots. Yeah, I'm not sure why they come off. Maybe someone can tell me in the comments, maybe it makes it easier to mount accessories or something like that. Um, but the fact that it has a lot of slots is pretty good. Um, I like the top handguard that it covers the barrel, so if you're banging it around, you're not bashing the barrel, um, which is nice. Um, and it just looks really slick, honestly. Um, if you want to save weight, you can take that off. It's just held in by a bunch of screws. Um, so it'll probably lighten the rifle up a tiny bit if you take that off. Um, it goes from about right here down in there, forward, so, um, yeah, what else is there to say, lots of things, um, it comes with a QD sling stud mount, uh, it's meant to be single point for some reason, and don't ask me why they should have made it, they should have put two of them on the rifle, but there's only one right there, um, no idea why they did that. There should, in my opinion, be one on the um, 
on the handguard as well so that I can mount a two-point sling. Um, I had to go buy a mag pull, uh, M-lock, um, QD mount, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Um, so BCL, if you're listening on future versions of this rifle, for the love of God, put a QD mount on the handguard, please. Um, the action is rather interesting. It's, a, it's an in-house designed action, so it's the uh, MRX Super Short, I think is what they call it. Um, it's a little bit shorter than a standard Remington 700 action, and it's got a 60 degree bolt throw. So a Remington 700 has a 90 degree bolt throw. So it's a shorter bolt throw. That was a three lug design bolt. Uh, it's very quick to operate. It's very nice. Um, I quite like it, and I, I I like the bolt handle as well. It's, it's small, but it's functional. It's got the, the large bolt head on, or head on there. Um, the lugs are really interesting. Um, but it's three lug, it's pretty standard three lug. Um, they're pretty thick and beefy, which means should last a long time. Um, you might be able to shoot some higher pressure loads out of this thing. Um, I would be surprised if I could get the bolt out right now, but we'll give it a quick try. Uh, there's a little button like most rifles just on the back here to release the bolt. For some reason, I'm garbage at doing it. Two-handed like this, I need the rifle to be Set down. Yeah, I just can't do it. That's okay though. Um, so I think I've gone over kind of all the features of the rifle. Let's talk about the muzzle brake. I'm not a fan of guild muzzle brakes on short barreled rifles. With a little cartridge like this, it's not that big of a deal. It's a, it's gonna make it more noisy for your neighbors at the range. Um, but it. And it's gonna make it more noisy for you as well. I always wear double ear protection. I, I usually shoot uh, short build rifles, so it's not, I'm used to it. But this rifle is not particularly loud, but I'm still gonna be putting a linear compensator on it. Um, uh, S&J Hardware Nano Comp. Um, Cause I, I think like for a cartridge like this, it almost has no recoil to begin with. And then the guild break just makes things probably not so pleasant for your neighbors at the range. So. Um, I'll be changing that out, and it'll also shorten the overall length of the rifle by maybe half an inch, so that's nice. Um, so let's talk about the range trip here. So I went to the range yesterday, um, had a bunch of Hornady um, AMAX hand loads, so they're 55 grain AMAX bullets, um, minimum charge in my book. I just loaded a bunch of them up just to go shooting. Um, they performed quite well, and I brought uh, some factory ammo, some Hornady 75 grain black. Uh, so that's a Boattail hollow point uh, bullet that's in that cartridge. Um, so uh, the AMAX performed really well. Best groups I got, so I got a three shot group where two bullets were basically in the same hole. And uh, that was one and one eighth inch at 100 meters. I'm not sure what that is in MOA, but either way, it's pretty good. Um, and then I did a five shot group where I got uh, one and three eighths inches at 100 meters. So uh, it's more accurate than I need it to be. And it's at that point, at that point of accuracy with this power of scope, and I did not have a rear rest or anything. I was just using my bipod. Um, that's probably as accurate as I can be, so it's probably not a reflection of the rifle. Um, it's more of a reflection on my abilities with that kind of magnification. If I had a, a 14 power maybe on this thing, I uh, probably could have shrunk those down maybe another half MOA maybe, who knows. Um, but uh, either way, it's performing really well um, for what I want out of it. Uh, the 75 grain, uh, Oh, by the way, the let's go back to the 55 grain AMAX. Um, they were 2,260 feet per second. That's kind of my average velocity for those. And that's a minimum load, so I can work my way up from that and make it a little better. I'd imagine we'd be able to work our way up to maybe 2,400 feet per second. Be my guess. Um, uh, the 75 grain uh, performed fairly poorly. I was getting two MOA at least. Um, and that's because I kept getting flyers in every single group. And I think at that point the barrel, it wasn't hot, but it was warm. And with these, um, 
kind of mediocre quality barrels that you get with a budget rifle like this, um, you're going to start to see a little bit of wander as the barrel heats up. So it's going to open your groups up a little bit. Um, so that may be, maybe that can be attributed to that uh, thing there. I'm not sure. So um, I've got a few more rounds. Next time I'm at the range when the barrel's cold, I'm going to shoot some of those and see if it's any different, but I suspect it won't be. Um, but without the flyers with the 75 grain, I would guess, I didn't measure, but I would guess it was about one and a half MOA I was getting. Um, or one and a half inches, I should say, at 100 meters. Um, so, not too bad, not very good, to be honest. Um, I'd like to get some heavier bullets and do some hand loads and see kind of how that works out. Um, probably some 75 grain, 90, if I could fit 110 grains into this AR mag, then I would load those up as well. Um, that'll be over the next at least few months, if not longer. I'll be kind of doing that, hopefully. Unfortunately, life is very busy. We're in the middle of a move uh, to a different city, and um, we've got a baby on the way, so I mean, I'm gonna, not going to have a lot of spare time soon. Um, or spare money for that matter. But either way, um, the rifle performed very well. I was very impressed. Um, for what you're paying and what you get, bang for your buck is high. It is, this rifle is very, very nice. I definitely recommend, if you're on the fence about getting one, I definitely recommend getting one. Um, you know, both guns are super fun to shoot. Um, and, uh, this thing just looks pretty badass and uh, you know for me I, I partially bought it I like I like short barrel rifles so that's my kind of addiction is I really like you know compact firearms um, and part of the reason for that is I like to go shooting in the boonies and I like to take my motorcycle there so I can strap my firearm into a small case not wear it on my back or have it strapped to my motorcycle go off-roading somewhere a remote set up a temporary range and go shooting it's a ton of fun, and I'm looking forward to doing that with this rifle. Um, so uh, you'll kind of see some videos of that in the future, hopefully. Um, and this rifle makes a really good branch gun. You can just toss it in your truck. You can carry it around. It's not too, too heavy. Even with all this crap strapped to it, it doesn't feel heavy. It's probably eight pounds, but it doesn't feel heavy. I should go weigh it, but uh, it's probably about eight pounds. Um, they come 6.9 pounds, like empty, like with no accessories, all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, uh, get one of these, man. They're they're pretty cool, and and you're supporting a Canadian company, um, you're keeping money in our economy, so that's also important. Um, I'm gonna backtrack a little bit, and I do want to talk about something real quick. Uh, the handguard here, um, so it's flat on the bottom. There's no beveled edge here like there is kind of on the top. You can see how it goes kind of 45 degrees and 45 degrees, and then it goes 90 degrees at the bottom. It's okay, it's good for resting on things. Like if you're gonna rest on like a post or a barrier or something, um, I guess that makes sense. Um, but I would have liked to see this edge here like just beveled a little bit more. It's, it's not uncomfortable to hold, but it's not comfortable to hold either. So um, let's kind of do a summary of all the negatives of this so far. Um, muzzle brake, in my opinion, needs to be replaced, but you don't have to. Um, that's kind of more my opinion. I think there should be a second QD sling mount on the handguard, which there is not. Um, and I mean, if you're really picky about fit and finish, I mean, if you are, you're probably spending more money on a really high quality rifle anyways. This is a high quality rifle, but um, you know what I mean. Um, you got a tiny bit of machining marks just right there. Otherwise, um, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, let's go over some of the kind of really neat features of this rifle. So you got a 60 degree bolt throat rifle, which you just have to pay quite a bit, more, quite a bit more for because it's usually a custom action. Um, you get a trigger tech trigger. Um, takes AR mags if you already have AR mags. That's a bonus. Um, takes AR you know, accessories, M-Lock, uh, that could be a bonus for people. Um, so you can use AR stocks on it, AR grips, 
all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's actually pretty accurate for what it is. Um, I was expecting it to be worse. I was. They, they had a guarantee of one and a half MOA, so I was thinking, okay, well, this is probably going to be like a two MOA rifle. But it's looking to me, I've done no load development, I've done nothing, and I'm already getting, you know, pretty close to one MOA. So with a little bit of development, testing different bullet weights, different bullet brands, things like that, um, I think we're going to be able to get probably sub MOA, that's my guess. Um, even with this optic, so we'll see. I'd like to get another higher power optic to kind of try so that I can kind of eliminate myself from the, um, eliminate kind of myself from the groupings, like at, at this magnification, I think my best groupings I could probably do would be one MOA. Um, that'd be my absolute best. and. Um, so if I had something like 14 power or 20 power, I can kind of eliminate that because I can see precisely where I'm aiming on the target. This I'm kind of plus or minus half MOA probably when I'm looking at the target and I'm really concentrating. Um, so I think this rifle is capable of more than what I've been able to demonstrate um, so far, which is very promising. Um, I'm going to stop rambling now though. That was my first impressions review of the BCL MRX Bison and uh, thanks for watching. I'll try to um, upload some shooting video in the next few months for you guys. Thanks. Bye.